In this lesson, we're going to be solving systems of linear equations by graphing. The success criteria is I can graph a linear equation, I can find the point where two lines intersect, and I can solve a system of linear equations by graphing. A system of linear equations is a set of two or more linear equations in the same variables. An example is shown below. A system of linear equations is also called a linear system. Here's our example. We have our two equations of y equals x plus 1 and y equals 2x minus 7. A solution of a system of linear equations in two variables is an ordered pair that is a solution of each equation in the system. The solution of a system of linear equations is the point of intersection of the graphs of the equations. So for this example, we're going to solve the system by graphing. Okay. Well, I have two lines right here, two equations of the lines, I should say, and they're both in slope-intercept form, okay? Well, this is y equals 2x plus 5, and this is y equals negative 4x minus 1. Well, since they're in slope-intercept form, I'm going to identify the slope and the y-intercept and then use that to help me graph, okay? So for the first equation, I have 2 as my slope because that's the number that's being multiplied by x when y is alone, okay? And I have 5 as my y-intercept, okay? And that corresponds to the point 0, 5. So that's this ordered pair right here. So this y-intercept goes with this ordered pair right here. So that's my first point. And then I'm going to use my slope, my rise over run. Okay, well, that's 2, but I would, could write that as 2 over 1 here. So my m for this equation equals 2 over 1. Okay, so I could either go up to right 1, right there, or I could go down 2 and left 1. And I'm going to keep going down 2, left 1. Okay, when we're graphing systems of linear equations, uh, it is always important to fit as many points as you can on the line when you're doing this by hand, okay? That's going to um, give yourself the best chance of getting the most accurate answer, okay? Now I'm going to draw a line through these points. Okay, so now I've successfully graphed my first equation. Now I want to graph my second equation, all right? Well, I see the y-intercept is negative 1 because that's my constant term for this equation. Okay, that corresponds to the ordered pair 0, negative 1. That's right here. Okay, and I'm going to graph this one in red. So that's right there, okay? So I'm done with my y-intercept. Now I'm going to find my slope. It's going to be negative 4 because that's the number that's being multiplied by x when y is alone. Okay, but I'm going to rewrite that as a fraction to help me graph. So m equals negative 4 over 1. So this is either negative 4 over positive 1 or positive 4 over negative 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go either down 4 and right 1, or I can go up 4 and left 1. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and then left 1. Okay, down 4, right 1 would fit on this graph. Okay, and we can already see the point where uh, I'm going to find my intersection right there. Okay, but I'm going to keep going. So up four, so one, two, three, four, left one. So now I'm going to draw a line through these points. So now to find the solution of the system of equations, I'm going to find the ordered pair where they intersect, and that's this ordered pair right here, negative one, comma, three. So I'm going to write that down. So negative one, comma, three. This is my solution, okay? And to check my answer, to make sure that it's correct, I can plug these values in. Now, if you do it the way that I just did and plot every single point that fits in your graph and if they intersect on a grid line, uh, you don't actually have to check because you know for a fact that you'll get the correct answer. But if you didn't do that or if you have two lines that intersect not on a grid line, then you would have to check, okay? And I'm just gonna show you how to check really quickly. So I just wanna plug my x values into my x's of my equations and my y values of my y's of my equations. And if both equations are true, then this is the solution to the system of equations. So right here, I'm going to do 3 equals 2 times x, which is negative 1, and then plus 5. So this is going to be negative 2 plus 5 equals 3. That's true. So that works. And then for the second equation, I have 3 equals negative 4 times negative 1. 3 equals negative 4 times negative 1, and then minus 1. Well, negative 1 times 4 right here, that's going to be positive 4. So 4 minus 1 equals 3. That is also true. So since they're both true for both equations, I know that this is the correct answer, and now we're done. In this example, we're going to solve the system by graphing. Okay. Well, I have one line that's in slope-intercept form, y equals 2x minus 2. And then this one is in standard form. Okay. So we can graph that in a number of ways. Uh, first, I'm going to graph the 
first equation, so y equals 2x minus 2. My y-intercept is negative 2 right here. That corresponds with the ordered pair 0, negative 2. Okay. And then I'm going to plot that right here. So I've plotted my y-intercept. Now I'm going to find my slope. Slope is the number that's being multiplied by x when y is alone. So this is going to be 2 right here because 2 is being multiplied by x. And to write that as a fraction, I can have m equals 2 over 1. Okay, so from right here, I'm going to go up 2 and right 1. I'll keep going up 2, right 1, fit as many points as I can on the graph. I'm also going down 2 and left 1 right now. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line through this. All right, so I've successfully graphed my first equation. Now, this equation, negative x plus 2y equals negative 4. There's multiple ways you could do this. You could plot the intercepts, or you can convert it into slope-intercept form. I'm going to convert this into slope-intercept form. Okay, so I have negative x plus 2y equals negative 4. I'm going to add x on both sides to solve for y. So I get 2y equals positive x minus 4. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides, a.k.a. divide every term by 2. I can rewrite this as y equals, well, x over 2. I could put a 1 here. This is the same thing as 1 half x, so I'm going to write it like that. 1 half x minus, well, 4 over 2 is just 2. Okay, so now I have my equation in slope-intercept form. So what I'm going to do right now is identify the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, Well, the y-intercept is negative 2 here. So I'm going to plot that, and notice this is already on my line. Okay, so this is actually going to be the solution to my equation, but we're going to finish graphing this line just to make sure. Okay, and then the slope is 1 over 2 because that's the number that's being multiplied by x. So 1 half is my slope, so I'm going to go up 1, right 2. And I'm also going to go down 1, left 2. All right, now I'm going to draw a line through this. Okay, so now I've drawn my line here, and I see that, once again, we are correct. This is the ordered pair, 0, negative 2, that uh, the lines are intersecting at. So I'm going to write that down for my solution. So this is my solution, and like I said, since we did the way that I plotted every single point that fits on this graph and they intersect at a grid line, I know that this is the correct answer and I don't even need to check my answer, so now we're done. In football, each extra point made is one point, and each field goal made is three points. A kicker makes a total of eight extra points in field goals in a game and scores 12 points. How many field goals did the kicker make? All right, so whenever we have a word problem like this, it's very helpful to assign ourselves some variables, okay? So I'm gonna call x the number of extra points made and then y will be the number of field goals made. Okay, so now, once I've assigned my variables, what I wanna do next is I wanna write two equations, so I wanna write a system of equations that will help me solve this question. How many field goals did the kicker make in total? So that's basically just gonna be our y value here. So let's look back up what we have, okay? So we know that each extra point is worth one point, and I know that the field goal is worth three points. And I also know that I scored a total of 12 points. So if I multiply one times x, the number of extra points, and then I add three times the number of field goals, that will give me the total amount of points that the kicker got in the game, and we know that's 12. So the way I could write this is one times x plus three times y equals 12, okay? Once again, this is one point for every extra point plus three points for every field goal, and that equals our total points, which is 12. But if you notice, this one coefficient here, that's already assumed if I don't have anything written, so I don't even need this here. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite this as x plus three y equals 12. So that's my first equation. If I go back up here, we also know that the kicker makes a total of eight extra points and field goals. So the number of kicks that the, that the kicker makes total is eight, okay? Well, there's only two types of kicks that they can make, the extra point and the field goal in this case. So that's just gonna be x plus y has to equal our total amount, which is eight. 
So that's my second equation. Okay, so now all I need to do is just graph these two lines, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these into slope intercept form, starting with uh, x plus y equals eight. So if I do that, x plus y equals eight, I'm gonna subtract x on both sides to solve for y. I get y equals negative x plus eight, okay? So I'm gonna graph this line right here, y equals negative x plus eight. Notice my y-intercept is eight, and my slope is just the negative sign. Well, that's negative one, okay? So my slope, I can write this as m equals negative one over one, okay? My y-intercept is the order pair zero, eight. So I'm gonna plot that right here, okay? And then from here, I'm gonna go down one, right one, and I'm gonna keep doing that. Down one, right one, down one, right one, and follow this pattern. And notice we're, we're in the first quadrant right here because it doesn't make sense to make negative extra points or negative field goals. So I only need a line segment here. All right, so now I've drawn my first equation. Now I'm gonna do my second equation, which is this one, x plus three y equals 12. I will solve that for slope intercept form over here. So x plus three y equals 12. I'm gonna subtract x on both sides. So I get three y equals negative x plus 12. And then what I'm gonna do is divide every term by three. Okay, so I get y, because these threes cancel, and then negative x over three, I could put a one in here if I wanted and rewrite this as negative one-third x, and then 12 over three is just four, okay? So now this is in slope-intercept form. My y-intercept is four, because that's the constant term here. So I'm gonna plot that here. I'll do that in red. And then my slope, is negative one third, because that's the number that's being multiplied by x here. So I'll go down one and write three. Okay, now I'm gonna draw my line. Technically a ray in this case. Um, anyway, I see that these lines intersect at the ordered pair six comma two right here. So this is my solution. So that is the ordered pair six comma two, okay? But the question, if you if we zoom back in here, it says, how many field goals did the kicker make? Okay, well, this is one of the many reasons why it's useful to assign your variables. I know what variable I'm looking for here, okay? I assign y the number of field goals, okay? So how many field goals did the kicker make? Well, y is our field goals. So if we look over here, I made two field goals because that's my y component here. So my word answer is gonna be the kicker made I'm gonna just slide it over here, erase that. The kicker made two field goals. And now we're done with this one.